you've been working hard, you have a few good cover songs under your belt. Maybe you want to start a cover band and have some questions. Our special guest, Miguel Martinez, is sure to have the answers. This is Music Student 101. Here are your hosts, Jeremy Burns and Matthew Scott Phillips. We got something special for you today, guys. We have Miguel Martinez, a drum player who plays for one of Birmingham's premier cover bands, Gentleman Zero. And this is a cool thing to talk about because even if you are writing your own material while you're working on that, you still want to get your performance chops up. And a great way to do that is to cover other people's music and get up on stage and just do it. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about that today. And there's also this sort of dichotomy between are we a band that writes songs and play songs that we wrote or are we a band that learns songs that other people wrote and, and plays that? And it seems like there's, there's you know, there's sort of these two sides, two, two choices you can make. Some people do mixtures of both, but a lot of people seem to either do one or the other. So it's, it's important, I think, to understand what you want to do or what your, your band or your group wants to do and why. Mm-hmm. I think if, if you decide to start making money as a musician, one of, the, one of the quicker, maybe an easier ways to do it would be to get together with a group of people and get a cover band together play songs that people are automatically familiar with and want to pay good money to hear live. And pay good money live in they many do. cases. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why we're talking to Miguel. Miguel is a drum player in, in uh, a few bands, actually one of which is Jasper Cole, my Celtic band. I love Woo! Celtic rock band. Woo! Uh, Murphy's. <laughs> Murphy's. <laughs> and then another is actually Gentleman Zero, mm-hmm. which is the, the cover band he plays in. Yes. Tell us a little bit about Gentleman Zero. Gentleman Zero is a byproduct, it's pretty much preppy wild. <laughs> I, it's funny, I understand what you mean when you say that, yeah, even though I've never heard those two well, words together before. You know, everybody's out there with their black and their tattoos and just eyeliner and their bandanas, like rocks, like no, 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 we're gonna be the good looking boys in the white, all our hair done, <laughs> in the suits, and it's gonna yeah. be fun. It's a show, I mean, you guys, yeah. you guys have the lights, you have smoke, and Miguel has the triggers on his drum kit. You see a little key over there? It's kind of cool because he triggers it. But yeah. either way, they all dress up nice. They get into it. They get into character. They get into form. And we have fun. And they have a great time. We sell fun. You sell fun. That's what Gentleman Zero is about. It's, it's, a, it's a collective fun scenario. We're not worried about being musicians. Mm-hmm. And I think that having done this in reverse with my musical career, because I toured sure. professionally with an original band. Okay, so we've we've got both sides of yeah. Uh, yeah I've done that. Been there, done that. I did that for five years, and I had fun, made a lot of money. But when I was asked to be in Gentleman Zero, it was I never knew what that world was like. Yeah, and then I jumped in, and I was like, "Hey, there are girls here. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. More girls. <laughs> More girls. <laughs> so much better. Where? Why have I been doing this wrong?" Um, so, um, anyway, so as a musician, yeah. as a musician, it's like I said, we sell fun. We're all everybody, Norton, Jay, and Kale, talented in their own respects, and pretty much masters of their craft. And yeah. the, the relationship, the chemistry is good. Yeah, that's fascinating when you think about when you say we sell fun, which is a different thing from we sell our musical creativity. Yeah, right? right. When you're when you're in a, a, an original band. Yeah. That's kind of what you're selling. We've we feel that we've brought some, we've created something that that can, that has something to contribute to the musical world, and and you know we're we're expressing that to you. We're selling it, you know. And but in Gentleman Zero, we sell fun. We yeah, want, we, we sell you have a you're having having a good time is all we're really interested in. That's really it. And an as, a, as a cover yeah. band, you have to have that mentality because nobody you you can't take yourself too seriously. People do that, and it comes across as idiotic. <laughs> you know, you're on stage, and you're like, yeah, I'm badass. You're singing Journey and Lady Gaga, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You know, have fun with it. Enjoy uh, yourself. You're not Lady Gaga. You're not exactly. Lady Gaga. Yeah, and, like, and you're not the dude from Journey either. Yeah, honestly, no, 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 there is no other Steve Perry. <laughs> or the <Yeah>. new guy. <laughs> yeah, Steve, or, yeah, Steve Perry, thank or, you. His name Steve, escaped me. But. Steve Carey or 
whatever Perry, Steve no, Perry. Steve Perry, yeah. yeah. His name escaped me for a minute. But the new guy is just impressive. He's just, and he's not like, yeah. him on YouTube. Anyway, moving on. Not to get on. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we digress. <laughs> but no, no, no. You gotta, you have to, you can't take yourself too seriously in a cover band. That's, that's, that's not a good attitude. It doesn't translate to the audience. An audience wants to have a good time. So do you think the audience can pick up on that if you're taking yourself too seriously oh, as a yeah, cover band? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Now, as a cover band as well, you're also background noise. Right. Nobody's really giving a crap what you're doing. Yeah, you can be background noise as an original band too. Or jazz. Yeah, and yeah. even and even so, and more so even. Yeah. But uh, I was gonna get that right at some point. Um, <laughs> but no, no, no. And you, that's kind of the deal. It's like nobody's really there to see you. Nobody's really there for your brand or your logo. They're there to have a good time. And so the way to really get people involved is for you to have a good time. Because if you're having a good time, everybody's gonna notice. If you're having a crappy time. People are going to notice that. Yeah, it's like they're like, well, this band sucks because they're look at them. They're just they're not having fun. Yeah. And gentlemen, we goof off. Yeah. We play Miley Cyrus <laughs> for crying out loud. Like that's what we do. Yeah. And it, it's, like I said, sell fun. That's what we do. It, it is something that took me a long time to understand was necessary, and in, in really any kind of live performance was to have fun, mm-hmm. and and to be creating that that episode because because you're absolutely right. People come to a to a show like that, and then they want to have fun. Yes. You know, they don't really care how many thousands of times you've played this same damn song. Doesn't matter. Know, they, yeah, they they have never heard it, or, or you know, they they came there to, to have a good time. Yeah. And that, that's extremely important all around, I think. And Yeah, and there's the other side of that, too, where it's like most people have never... Our audience, of course, they're a lot younger. Right. Um, mostly college age and they've never seen some of these bands. They've never, they, you know, they're, they're not going to know what it's like to go see Def Leppard. They're not going to know what it's like to go see Molly Crew. Yeah. So when Who's you play Motley the, Crew? Yeah. So when you play these songs that they love, all you're that person. <laughs> you you're are that, Motley you're Crew. You're yeah. that yeah. rock star. Are close. So, I mean, you're <laughs> the closest thing you can get. And that's, I mean, I'm a narcissist. So like, I, grab it and go with it, man. You yeah. know, just be cool, have a good time, smile. Yeah. Nobody should be angry playing an instrument. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, should, it should never happen. Nobody and should be angry playing an instrument and getting paid to do that. Really? And yeah. it's, it's so terrible how often that happens, uh, even though there's really no no good excuse for you being being that way. But it, it happens. It happens. Uh, yeah, I've I, seen I, it. I have. I have seen bands, uh, both covers and originals, that are very serious and very pissed off looking. Or, or just, in some cases, just look like they're at work. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That goes back to our discussion on performer being a musician. Indeed, and we had that we had that discussion about being a musician. If you're getting into it, other people are going to kind of get into it too because they're going to feed off that, um, you know, there's energy. Your energy, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you uh, go back a little bit to the kind of the business aspect of it. Um, tell me a little bit about your gigging schedule. Uh, starting next week, along with uh, Jasper Cole, of course, and with Gentleman Zero, I will be booked until middle of January. Mm-hmm. Every weekend. Every weekend. Ridiculous. Thursday, uh, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturdays. And some Thursdays. Yeah. But that's okay, because that's what I do. Yeah. And the gigging schedule, we play mainly, you can start anywhere and go do it. And of course, you know, Lost Leader Shows is, is what we like to call them, where you go and you play to get, you know, some exposure, to get some some uh, under your belt, if you will, like some experience, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. After that, you know, you kind of move on and you can, like I said, develop your brand, make sure people know who you are, and bring fun. Because the crowd, bars are too weird about, like, well, you didn't bring a crowd. I was like, well, no, that's a whole nother scenario. You hire a band to entertain their patrons. Right. You don't hire a band to bring a crowd. Yeah, this is one of these fundamental miscommunications I've always yeah. experienced. Yeah. The the bartender thinks you're going to bring no, 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 no. the crowd. The False. band thinks the False. crowd is going to be there. And yeah. well, and you know, either way, as far as like, and we've played to as little as, you know, 20 people and as much as I think our biggest crowd in a bar was probably about, eh, about 150. You know, I played way less for 20 than 20 people. I played <laughs> I for way say, less than 20 but, people. I think but, I played for the band slash girlfriend, <laughs> the, the girlfriend slash wives of the band once. Mm-hmm. I think we played for them once. But, but respectfully, <laughs> with Jasper Cole, we've also done a whole lot other, a whole lot bigger things. Anyway, <laughs> moving aside, Gentleman Zero Focus. Mm-hmm. Um, Innisfree is fun. 
industry is actually great. Uh, this is like a mid-sized venue, I guess you would say. Yeah, yeah, down in Lakeview. Small to mid-sized venue. We've done as anything as small as Railroad Park to anything as big as, well, industry is the big, sidebar. Schedule, keep a, keep a good schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh, know your worth. Yeah. That's important. That is like, very don't, important. Don't go do it for nothing. How many musicians yeah. undersell themselves? Uh, uh, well, in Birmingham, a ton. Yeah. But, all, know, of all of them. All yeah, all, everybody. To, you know, nice. we, we live, and I love this all this nonsense about, like, Birmingham's a music town. It's like, no town is worse in, in the world than Birmingham I, I, on their musicians. Yeah, I, I honestly... There's been so many... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, and not to not to dwell on uh, local stuff too much, but, you know, I, I honestly don't understand how people say that. It's crazy, because there's... Food been town, so many, I understand, but, but there's music been so town... Many, there, yeah. But there's so much talent here. That's the thing. It's like, so much talent. Yeah. There always has been. I yeah, mean, so much talent that has to go other places to get noticed. I mean, we're talking back in the old days, Slick Lily, we're talking yeah. Brother Kane, we're talking Hungerfield, we're talking Virgos Merlot, we're talking yeah. Wayne, we're talking, uh, I mean, Lynam, we're talking... Line, yeah, Lynam, I, I, I ran sound for a couple of... A couple yeah, of I mean, like, we're talking, you know, even my old band, Strangers and Pilgrims, we're talking about Gainer, we're talking a lot of talent. Leader Dog is still Leader here. Leader Dog is still out there. Cattle. Yeah. Cattle. Yeah, yeah, cattle is still here. I love cattle. Yeah. If you're hearing this cattle, I want to be drummer for you. But <laughs> I know. I love dirty, good old Southern rock. Yeah. And yeah. it sucks that they have to go somewhere else and play. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. But anyway. All right, moving on. Mo right. Mo moving on from our local scene. Homework-wise, this is something we were, we were um, thinking. How much time before you're actually sitting behind the drum set at the gig, how much time do you put in to being up to uh, that performance? Like, how many songs do you typically do uh, for uh, or try to learn for a gig? And what's your process to, to try to learn those? Like, do you, do you guys, you know, does somebody say, well, this is, you know, we're going to learn this song, so, you know, go get it get it on iTunes, whatever, sit down, learn it, come into band practice and... and ready. Ready to play it, or do you sit down and listen to it together, or what's the process? There? It's a combination of the two. Gentleman Zero does... Pretty much two sets a night. Okay. You do the first one. It's kind of the warm up. Yeah. About an hour, hour and fifteen, and then we take a break. Mm hmm. And then we hit the second set, which is the party set, is what we call. <laughs> was, right. Like yeah, that's when we get into. We started off with jump, and we mm -hmm. ended off with Miley Cyrus. Fascinating. Yes. <laughs> that and, is a huge wide oh, and, range we, and of... everything in between. We do. <laughs> Uh, it's it's so it's but but that's the thing the and it's taking it has taken about two and a half years to get the song order in, in the way it needs to be. It's like yeah. it's a formula almost. Yeah. And you you know and we don't like okay we don't pause between tunes. I'm big on that. We hit we play jump and I don't stop playing drums until it's over. We transition. Right into the next tune. We keep, yeah. and, and that's kind of the thing. It's like we keep everybody. That's the thing. You gotta, you gotta get them, and you got them. You gotta keep them there. Yeah. You I, can't give them time. Oh, so the process of learning all this stuff is, we'll have an idea, and we share. We we have a, a group me on mm -hmm. uh, the what do you call that thing? The telephone, the app, the app. It's group me. And yeah. we talk, we we kick back things back here and there, and like, hey, we should we should do like a case, pri private group. Yeah, private group. Case in point, uh, Uptown Funk. Yeah, love Bruno Mars. And it, it was just one of those like I heard that song and I was like, man, we should really like we could do this. You know, our lead singer is a dance instructor. Yeah, oh, he okay. can dance, and he's not he's a good looking guy. Like we could totally pull this off, and we 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 throw it out. It's an idea. We listen to it. We get together at, at a rehearsal space in Vestavia. And we hammer it out, and and the talent level's got to be there too, though. Everybody's yeah. got to do their part. And if if my guitar player, my bass player, can know how to do something as fast as I can, and we know that you know, for me, it's arrangement that's yeah. important. Yeah, it's so, got to be there. So what happens if the bass player has never heard this song before? Well, then we sit there and we lock ourselves up in that little room with no windows, and we listen to it. Uh, okay. And we play it. And we listen to it together. And we play it. Yeah. And we rep it. Okay. Yeah. Ninety percent of the time with Gentleman Zero, we learn. We listen to something maybe two times, and then we we're done. Yeah. Because once you once you reach a certain level of musical ability, yeah, um, it does. You know, 
learning one more new song does not does not take you six yeah, months. Yeah, it's not know? brain surgery, and yeah. it's yeah, it's 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 mathematics. And Putt has not a whole lot of complicated chords or rhythmic changes in a lot of pop music. It's a lot of stuff no. people want to hear in cover bands. Right. You know, it's all pretty straightforward. Ear candy for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Let's talk about um, interband personalities. Clashing, sacrificing, gelling, being inspired by, learning from. Okay, take it away, Mickey. Oh boy. <laughs> no, I mean, what's a good, what's a good, what's a good way to? Do put you it? have good stories and or bad stories? I have about... great stories. <laughs> I have, I've had the privilege of working with these guys for five years now, going on in April, and there's not been a lot of conflict. Amazingly. Yeah, that's Cause, great. Because we all know how this goes. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. There will come a time where you will hate white tennis shoes, by the way. <laughs> that is always my go-to for my touring band. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I guess creative differences usually come up in more original bands compared to cover bands. There's not a big argument on how Jimmy Page played that opening riff. Well, yeah, you always have the you always have the inarguable recording off, you know, listen to this, this yeah, is how it happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and when I'm when you're younger, I think you're prone to kind of accept a lot more. The fact that we're, you know, in our mid, late 30s is like, okay, we've been there, done that. Why? We're getting paid to have fun. Yeah. Why gripe about it? Really? And yeah. there and there are things that annoy me and annoy, I'm, I'm sure, this, you know, likewise for everybody else. Like, I, I'm always perpetually 30 minutes late. <laughs> and... You know, our lead singer wants to go to the gym and go for a swim before he, we get anywhere. Or, you know, and for my, like, I'm, they'll say the same thing about me and vice versa. I drink too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get crazy. Well, we are musicians. Uh, well, so. I mean, you know, and, you know, but uh, overall, the the conflicts are not there with Gentleman Zero. We yeah. have, you know, we, we have our differences, but, like, we're all grown-ups, too. Yeah. And we can face it and or move on and just you know is it easier being a little bit older is it easier for everybody to just say okay this is this is this is not so important a disagreement as as to make a big dramatic scene out of it yes. more so than than a, a band in their 20s might have done yes because in your 20s you still don't know anything <laughs> you're and right. yet your, your ego is emerging like a piece. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, once you're in your mid-30s and late 30s, your ego is like, that's I'm a narcissist. And we yeah. all are, by nature of what we do. You know, we have to be something bigger than ourselves. It takes a lot of ego to, to think, oh, I can go up here and, and, and have something to contribute to. You know, I can go up here and I, I deserve to be standing here on this stage or I, I you know I deserve to have these people playing this thing I wrote or, or whatever you're doing it takes a certain amount of, of, of ego just to say you know I have the I have the skills and in, in, in talent necessary to, to stand up here and I deserve to be up here it's, yeah, it's just really, natural yeah it's natural and that's, that's the thing that's crazy it's like I look at it as uh, myself personally it is a privilege and it's difficult sometimes because I have to hold it together he's seen me have a meltdown once <laughs> and every band gets one yeah. <laughs> and uh it, you you have to perform. To you you have to be that person that everyone wants you to be, and that's difficult. That's hard. Like you have to have something bigger than yourself to yeah. to accept that kind of responsibility. Because you know when you mess up and the band falls apart, it's a problem. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> it cannot be. That's that is not an option. Right, and, and if know. you're the one guy holding everybody back, then uh, you'll be the first to go, obviously. Uh, absolutely. Usually. And so you Usually. have to, uh, you got to bring your skill level. You have to have a good brain on your shoulders. And you have to just, you have to, you have to perform. It's got to happen. Yeah. So you, you, we've, we've talked a little bit about being that person uh, that you, that everybody wants you to be. Do you feel like that's, a character that you get into, or do you feel like that's just that's just you? That's who you are, or do you feel like you have to sort of get into a certain mentality to go on stage and, and sort of inhabiting a persona? I'll be honest with you, man. When I'm on stage, it's I'm I mean I'm a kid, at, you know, Chuck E. Cheese and the in the little <laughs> ball thing. Like it's it's just what I do. It's who I am, right? And I enjoy that. I liken it to Animal from the Muppets. 
Animal from the Muppets. <laughs> Chain me up. In other words, all id. Yeah. <laughs> we're, not, we're not involved in these deep <laughs> questions of self. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just, it's it's a time to focus, work, have a good time, and the payoff is just watching people applaud and go nuts over what you just did. That's just kind of it. Yeah. Well, this is kind of like, I, I guess, it's separating yourself, what does separate Gentleman Zero from a jukebox? You know, it's, it's more about the, the, the action and the, 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 you know, the chemistry and the energy, you know what I mean? Yeah, live music is live music. Yeah. And you can't, you know, as a child of growing up on the 80s, like, I remember seeing Skid Row. I remember <laughs> seeing Motley Crue. I remember seeing Guns N' Roses. They were terrible. <laughs> I remember seeing so many great bands, man. Uh, Aerosmith, like I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll take that. It's like those that... guys were such professionals. You and know? you know what? They had a good time. Yeah, they might have hated each other on that stage. See, that's what I kind of heard, and I don't. I <laughs> they hate each other. Don't quote me on this, but I thought I heard at some point that they could not all stand each other. But you would never know it by their stage yeah. performance. I had no idea. I was glad I paid seventy five dollars to go see them. Yeah. yeah, and because why? They're awesome. You may you you know most people may disagree musically, but whatever. Like Kiss, one of the most terrible bands in the world. <laughs> Let me tell you what you and I love I, I love watching Kiss. Right. I yeah. love going to a Kiss show because I'm going to see a lot of things blow up, <laughs> and I'm going to see blood them blood and the dragon thing and the breathing fire and the guitar that blows up and it's like that's a show. It's a show, mm -hmm. and that's what people you know. I can listen to a record. That's not a problem. I don't have to pay 60 bucks to go do that. I want to go see something and I want to experience something. And I think for, you know, as a musician, you need to, I need to deliver that. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody should. That's what you're giving away. I mean, you're putting yourself in that limelight. Yeah. You know, and that's what you're doing. And that's what people, you got to give people something to remember you by. All right, indeed. Let's talk about your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Need for another beer? We take a brief pause for the. Uh... Oh no no no! I'll, I'll, oh look, my last one. All right, go for it. Let's talk about your. <laughs> Let's talk about your interpretation of the songs you play. For example, even when I'm covering a song, I might not play it the exact same thing as they as the bass player yeah. plays. Although if it's like Billy Jean yeah. or some bass line we that should, everyone it, knows. Yeah, we we've we've done this uh, disclaimer before. Jeremy and I are both bass players. Yes, oh, yes. Right. <laughs> we can we can uh, we we uh, commiserate a lot with each other and we can talk about the fact that you know the bass player can in many cases be playing something completely different and you know how many people are necessarily going to notice? The drummer p might well, yeah. In the rhythm, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna notice. In the rhythm section, we might have a little bit more swing uh, room to swing around and do our own kind of little things because no one's listening as no, much. Nobody's listening but how as often much. Do you, when you play a song, when you're learning a song, do you learn it note for note, or do you throw your own little fills and stuff like that? I learn the arrangement. Uh huh. And what happens happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I learn the arrangement, and I'm pretty consistent about trying to keep things. I'm not gonna say regimented. But, you know, it's important to always put your flavor on something. And I think by that token of measure, it's, you just make it your own. But you got to keep it consistent. Um, and that comes with experience. You know, not, yeah. nobody, you know, crash symbols, they're pretty much exclamation points to the end of the sentence. Yeah. You don't need them all the time. And when I was 18, I played with a drummer that was, he was all crash symbol. Yeah, it's not good. To, yeah, he was... To the, to the point where the, the singer who was basically in front of him on the stage had this ringing in his ears that was just not going to work. And Jesus. You know, keep, yeah. it sim keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you need. You know, nobody's impressed yeah. because you can do 30,000 notes on drum fills, double bass, whatever. It's like, you know, if you're playing Lady Gaga, play Lady Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, if you're playing a, Nelly, play Nelly. That's a, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And, yeah, and and there is sometimes room to do little things, but yeah, but if you're yeah, playing there's... Rush, play a Rush song. <laughs> yeah. There's no problem there. Yeah, you know, like, but you know, just keep it, keep it within your parameters. You know, you're not impressing anybody. And Lord knows, drummers are the worst because we want to sit there. You know, 
I always tell people, I was like, what do you do? I do what I do best. What's that? Show off. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to work that hard. That's why I got into music. Drummers <laughs> work harder than anybody else in the music business, just in terms of a physical. I mean, you know, yeah, that drummers tough, man. Drummers could get off of, from a set from all ballads and still be sweating. And wait, they're and, sitting down the whole time. What the hell are you talking? <laughs> oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got all the cases. They got to move, and they, they, there, there's validity to that. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, and it's it's stamina. I actually time myself on one of the what do you call those little gadgets you put on your uh, a watch? <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> no, the little thingamajig that tells you how much you've walked. Oh, oh the, yeah, one of those little, little Fitbit thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. The fit, I actually put one of those on St. Pat's. Uh huh. In a show, I have successfully walked 5.7 miles. Nice. Feet only. Nice. Just bass drum and hi hat. That's that's just that's wild. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go up a flight of stairs without having a heart attack. But I can sit there and do that for three or four hours. Mm. Makes no sense. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, St. Pat's five point six miles. Think about that. Yeah, that's, that's usually a marathon. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Yeah, make me go get the get, make me go get the mail. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, yeah. For uh, just to fill in, these uh, both of these guys play in and uh, play in a, a rebel Irish band, and St. Patrick's Day is the, that whole the whole really week surrounding that really is it can is just a marathon of gigs. For mm. we've done seven shows in two days. That was on St. Pat's before. Yes, it's usually just a big. Crazy thing. It's what we call the Olympics. But anyway, Gentleman Zero yeah. is the same energy, you know, because you yeah. have to give 200%. Oh, well, it's the same thing about making the environment fun. And that, that's definitely a, an aspect of Jasper Cole is that the environment is very fun. Definitely. Yeah. That's got to be. Yeah. And you got to sell a lot of beer. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. insensitive question time. How much money can a good person, a good band who's good at making the environment fun expect to make? You can make, quite frankly, you can make as, I have this one belief. Jeremy knows this. Yeah. The Bible says, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> ah. Right. You can make as little as you want. You can make as much as you want. Our smallest paying gig, which we don't do anymore, was, you know, the, the whole hundred bucks a man thing. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. This is a four piece, just so you four guys piece. know. Four piece. Yes, four piece. Yeah. Uh, hundred bucks a man, you know, just, we want you for exposure, and then at the end of the night you get a bar tab, it's like, eh, we don't do that anymore. Okay. So, you can make up as much as thirty five, forty five hundred dollars a night. Yeah, that's incredible. And a, and oh, a good great. smashing cover band. A good is... smashing cover band. Weddings, I booked a wedding yesterday. That's and, money right there. Yeah, I booked a wedding yesterday, and I got a deposit for fifteen hundred dollars. Nice. And I'm going to get the other two thirds of that when we play the wedding. November 13th. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's just really kind of how you present yourself and what you're selling. Um, fun is the sell point. You also have to have a good attitude. Very important. Yeah. You have to have a good product. Good Indeed. gear. Yeah. You know, PAs, lights, the whole kit and caboodle if you want to make that investment. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like the hokey pokey, man. You get in with, you, you get out what you put in. Yeah. It's just kind of that. Yeah. And you you can make as you can make some money. There's some wedding bands out there I know that are making five thousand dollars playing weddings. They don't play bars. They just play they're in the private circuit. They play weddings. Yeah. There's some cover bands out there that are making serious, serious amounts of money. We're talking, you know, seven to ten thousand dollars, which is nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to go sing, you know, Jesse's girl. That's crazy. Yeah. But I mean they do it. <laughs> you know, it, it, that's a real thing. It happens. Yeah, but you can make as little as you want. Like I said, if you're going to demand, uh, you know, what you, uh, a good price, you better have a good product to sell. Right. Yeah, that, and that makes sense. That's not unlike pretty much every other business in the in the world. Right. right. You can only BS so much. Yeah. yeah like you know, <laughs> catch you on it. Yes, and if, if you're going to get up there in your affliction shirt and you're you know tuck it into your jeans and wear <laughs> boots, like okay. You're an yeah. IT guy during the day, aren't you? You know, yeah. like, you know, no, 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 no. like, I mean, what, what, what are you doing, man? You know, <laughs> get out of here with that nonsense. Yeah. Everybody knows I'm a musician. I can go to, you know, and you know, um, but, uh, with my girlfriend's work, we end up at, at some, you know, uh, we occasionally end up at some fairly high class stuff, and 
you know, I I can wear a two thousand dollar suit and it, it doesn't fool anybody. I'm a musician. Exactly. I'm a musician. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Everybody knows hey, I'm a musician. We all yeah. have the scarlet letter here on here. Yeah, right? people, <laughs> people walk up to me and say, "Well, what do you play?" But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me. I, I tell you this. One thing that I've enjoyed from covering songs. Two, well, two things I've enjoyed that I've noticed. You, you get instant gratification. The audience automatically knows the minute you start that song, they, they know the song, they connect with you immediately. So it's like you got the instant connection with the audience. Another thing I've liked is just that I'm adding to my repertoire. Anytime someone wants to learn a new song, it might not always be my favorite song, but then I learn it and it's just one more, one more feather in my hat. What, what, what are some of your advantages or things you've enjoyed about being in a cover band? All of that. Yeah. And, and, and I, I'll be, okay, I'm going to deliver this real quick. Go ahead. Kenny Loggins, Footloose. Yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Saw that in the theater. <laughs> yeah, that's how old I am. <laughs> and I just remember Footloose being such a, like, a, a, a point in my life, you know, at every bit of, what, 10 years old maybe I was. And I just remember thinking, man, I love, you know, you know uh, what is it? You're 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 playing so cool. Obey obeying every rule. What's that other little you're part? You're playing so <laughs> cool. Obeying every rule. Come on, I'm in your heart. That little part right there. I was like, man, if I could just one of these days, I'm gonna play that. Yeah. And here I am in my 30s, <laughs> and I did, and it was so rewarding. Yeah. Okay. Like well, you know, it's, it's been waiting a good while for a that. long time because I was a professional musician back in the day, and I cared about what I did, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I had a good time, and I made some good money. But at the same point, I wasn't having any fun. You yeah. know. So playing Footloose, playing Purple Rain, playing <laughs> Panama. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, like it's it's a little self rewarding to. Uh, it's almost a, it's some nostalgia. Do you think do you think Van Halen had as much fun playing Panama? Yes. Or ten times as yeah. much fun playing Panama. At, when they first recorded the first it. Yeah. Times. When they first recorded it. <laughs> Not now. Not now. Not now. No, 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 no. They hate each other. <laughs> but uh, it's nostalgia, man. It's like and like you're saying, you hear these songs and they stay with you, whether you're a listener, whether you're a musician, whether you're just, you know, whatever. Like they're yeah. in your head. Right. And so the when you're a musician and you take it a step further and you're like, you actually perform these tunes that you love so much. Yeah. Growing up or whatever, there's a memory somewhere, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it can be extremely gratifying. It's it? extremely rewarding, yes, yeah. and gratifying because you all of a sudden you're that guy. Yeah, like, I can close my eyes and man, I'm playing with Dave Lee Roth right now, <laughs> and I'm jamming and I'm having a good time, or I'm playing with Kenny Loggins, <laughs> or I'm playing with Lady Gaga, like Taylor Swift, whatever, <laughs> you know. And even if you're not playing with them, you know that you could. That's the other part. <laughs> the biggest narcissist in me is like every time we play a Bon Jovi tune, when I've seen Bon Jovi four or five times in my day, and that guy is a s uber talented. It's ridiculous how good that guy is, and he dresses well. But I can, if if what if the phone rang right now and Bon Jovi was like, "Hey man, I need, I need, I need a, drummer. a drummer," I'm like. Let's go. Jeremy, I'm taking the drums. I'm out. <laughs> I'm canceling all my dates. But I and had I'm, a recording session with those drums. <laughs> I'll buy another one. Yeah, right. But, yeah, it's like, no, but, yeah. but the, yeah, like you were saying, Jeremy, like you can do that. Yeah. That's pretty cool because there's not a lot. One in ten students are musically in, inclined. Yeah. You're one of those people, and you can do that. That's Anytime, a, at the drop of a hat, that's professional. A good, that's a good thing for our listeners to remember about themselves. If you know, it's, if they're here, if they're listening to this, then mm -hmm. they're musically inclined. It's a gift. Trust me. I come from a long line. I'm a Mexican, and I come from a long line of people. Trust me. There's 17 in my immediate family. It's ridiculous. I have 29 <laughs> first cousins. I'm the only person in my entire family that can play an instrument. Wow, man. Very nice. It's well, a God-given gift. And you yeah. know what? Use it. Yeah, really. Share yeah. it. Share it. Yeah, I think my girlfriend may have you beat. I think she has like 50 something first cousins. Gosh, she's Italian, Italian. She's Italian. Oh, Italian, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Understood. But no, no, it's a gift. It's a God given gift. I don't take it for, I try not to take it for granted. And it's, you know, my wife tells me all the time, it's like, you know, you have talent. I don't, I don't see it, and you won't see it, uh, the listener. Mm -hmm. You don't see that in yourself because it's just who you are. Right. You know, yeah. like, you, you know, you look in the mirror and you're still that guy. Yeah. But there is something special. There's something special about you, and that's what you got to, you uh, you know, remind yourself every now and then. Like, you're yeah. pretty damn cool, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it is important because there's so many people out there who are, who are 
who do things that you can't, you know. We, well, I like to call We were the, talking about Dream Theater, and it's like, oh, gosh, if yeah, I thought well, I, I could play like that. But, oh, and, and then yeah. they, and they're the tortured artists. It's like, you know, yeah. why are you mad about it? <laughs> Have fun, <laughs> you know? There has to be a certain amount of... of, of uh, very seriousness to get to that point, just just pure. Yeah, chop it's life, like I have guess. a good time. But this is this is something that we would like to ask for everybody that we ask onto our podcast. What advice would you like to impart to a beginning musician in terms of of what you do and and who you play for? And what is is there something that you wish you had understood better when you were younger, when you were first getting into it? My advice to a young musician coming up is stick with it when it stops being fun don't do it it's or expensive change those <laughs> that you do it with if it's yeah or ch- yeah, yeah or work on why it became not fun yeah yeah, yeah like figure yeah. that out like I, I had no intentions of being in a cover band after being in a touring professional band yeah and it happened and it's like it's just the greatest thing in my life i love it it's fun that's great and just you know have a good time that's i, I can't sell that enough have fun Make sure you're, you know, you're having a good time doing what you're doing because yeah. that's what it's all about. And that's such important advice for musicians too. I think, I think as a group, we tend to have a tendency to take ourselves seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kevin Nicholson. But anyway, <laughs> um, that's, our, that's our fiddle player. That's our fiddle player. <laughs> but no, uh, have a good time because nobody's gonna, you know, when you when you hit a bad note, when you when you screw up an arrangement, we know about it. Yeah. But nobody else does. Who cares? They're will, having fun. They're I, I, singing. I, I, I they're... will be an elitist one more time and quote Shoot. Beethoven. Okay. Um, to play a wrong note is nothing. Uh, to play without passion is unforgivable. I like that. Agreed. I like that. I totally agreed. Yeah. You ha- Enjoy yourself. Just have fun. Music's yeah. there. It's harmonious. It's coming out of you. You're a musician. It's what happens. Yeah. It is let, what happens. Let, let it do its thing. Have yeah. fun with it. You know, enjoy it. I, I, I guess that's... Say, of, sage advice, something we should all probably yeah. take to heart a little more. Yeah, a very zen approach, too. I kind of like Indeed, that. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Well, we've been talking to Miguel Martinez. Want to thank you again. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> my drum kit's right here. Your drum kit. My drum my kit. Drum I'm kit. Like, I'm like, <laughs> it's drum kit. I like to find it. So, it's just been here for so long. <laughs> it, it really has, man. I need, to, I need to give this thing some attention. But anyway, all the heads are in there. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, I know. And then some heads. Yeah, I got a, yeah, there's uh yeah, that, that that thing needs some loving. Well, hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of what it's like to play in a cover band. It's something that you should all consider. Uh, if not just to learn new material, then maybe to make a little bit of side money. Uh, go for that studio time when you want to record <laughs> a new original song. Until next time. Until next time. If you play in a cover band and want to add to the conversation, contact us at info at musicstudent101.com. If you've enjoyed these podcasts, be sure to look us up on social media and help spread the word.